Today we're going to answer the question, are flip to side magnifiers like this one here actually worth it for Airsoft? What's up Airsofters, my name is Lane and I think a lot of players want to put magnified optics on their Airsoft guns because they think it'll give them an advantage. Being able to have that magnification to be able to see further away and hopefully make more accurate shots. However, I think this is another example of one of those things that while it's a really great idea in the firearms community, when we're trying to bring that over into Airsoft, it doesn't necessarily work the same way and have the same benefits. So let's talk about it in today's video and also some tips after I've put a lot of time behind this flip to side magnifier. Now I think it's important to recognize some of the differences between engagements in the real world or the usage of these flip to side magnifiers versus airsoft. And I think what the flip to side magnifiers give you with a real firearm is it allows you to really take full advantage of your round. You know, you're seeing these primarily on rifles that are shooting 556, 223. You never see somebody put these on a pistol caliber carbine because for those rounds, you know, you really can't take advantage of having magnification with them. And I think the same thing goes for airsoft because airsoft guns only shoot about 200 feet or so, maybe a little bit more if you've got a higher end build. It's not necessarily the same advantage that you get out of using one of these compared to when you're using it with a real rifle. And because of that, I think the way that we use it in airsoft also has to change. So this one here is from Pinty right on the back here. The optic is also by a company that they own called Hiram. And I really like it on here because it's one nice complete package. I tend to prefer this over like an LPVO, a low power variable optic, because it tends to be smaller, lighter, and if I don't want to use this, I can remove it and I still have this optic on there. I think there's a time and a place for a low power variable optic. However, we'll discuss that in just a little bit. So the way that I would recommend using one of these in Airsoft is stationary. I think that's where these really shine because they're not really great when you're on the move. When you have any sort of magnification, when you're trying to use it, when you aim down the rifle, and try to do that without hitting my microphone, it really limits your field of view and kind of gives you a little bit of tunnel vision. So if you're on the offensive, you don't want that. You want to be able to see to your peripherals, see around the side, and this kind of limits it. Now, the reason why I think this may be better than a low power variable optic for a lot of people is because if you are in the assaulting mode, you are, you're probably going to be close to people, but you can also flip it out of the way and then you have your rifle as just a standard red dot. And that is very beneficial. For these sort of magnifiers, I think they do the best when you're in a defensive type of position. And the reason why I say that is that you're stationary and it's going to make sure that you're not moving around. The other thing with these flip to side magnifiers is kind of like a lot of things in life. You kind of get what you pay for. Now this one from Pinty, I think is a nice middle ground between budget and quality. I've seen some magnifiers out there that are just straight garbage. There's obviously really great ones from EOTech, but not everybody has EOTech money. So I think these Pinty's kind of hit the value realm of getting something that's a good quality, but also being pretty affordable. The issue that you have when you go cheaper with magnified optics is that the eye relief is going to be pretty bad. And that can be an issue in airsoft because we wear goggles or face mask, paintball mask, whatever it may be. And if you have to get super close on the optic to actually be able to see through it, like this is about where the eye relief is for this Pinty. Um, if I had like a mask or something, I just would not be able to get that close. With really cheap ones, I've had it go so bad that the optic is smushed up against my eye protection, like pushing it into my head. So that's something to be aware of. Because of that, that's kind of hard to do that while you're like running forward with your rifle. So I tend to prefer this in more defensive positions. The other reason why that's really important, the eye box of it, is because of vibration. Now on a real firearm, there's recoil. But on an airsoft gun, either, you know, just your body swaying, I think that by having this in a nice stationary position, that means that you can really get up on that eye box and have your eye be exactly where you have to be. But as I like, as I move the rifle right now, as if I'm like walking and it's just kind of swaying a little bit, it becomes a little bit harder to see it. So again, I think this is great for defensive positions. I think the best usage I've had for one of these so far is I was up on the second story of a building 
I was able to brace the rifle up against a window, you know, like I put my hand on the window, put my barrel on it, or I could just rest it on the windowsill. And that's really when I had some advantageous moments with this. And with a machine gun, you know, I was just raining down fire and able to hold off a lot more people than we had in the building. So I think these are, again, just great defensive tools. But when you get on the offense, some of their kind of weaknesses start to show up. Going back to the discussion of using this in the realm of airsoft and the amount of range that we have compared to an actual firearm, I think these start to lose some of their value when you're using it on a machine gun. I originally bought this because I was like, wow, having that extra range would be nice on my Stoner 63, being able to make sure that I'm hitting targets from far away. However, what I discovered is that there's just a lot of situations where if you're using a full auto platform like a light machine gun or you're just at a field that allows it for everybody, at that point, why not just track your BBs with your naked eye? I just found that this works a lot better with semi-auto guns than full auto guns for that reason, because what would happen is I'd be engaging people in full auto, trying to use the magnified optic, and then what I'd end up doing is just instead of looking down my sights, well, what I would do is I would just, you know, turn my head slightly, watch the trail of BBs going down range, and then that way I still have a lot of my peripheral vision, I can move around if I have to, and I'm not struggling to kind of find the eye box of this magnifier as I'm playing. So I think this works a lot better on semi-auto in my opinion. I think that if you're gonna put a magnified optic on there, just the way that Airsoft works, if you're going full auto, you're probably gonna be more accurate just tracking your BBs with your naked eye at that point, even at farther ranges. Now, I do still like it on the machine gun. I wanna try it more because I really wanna give it a chance, but I tend to find that this works out a little bit better on you know just standard rifles. Like I like putting it here on this little Mark 18. I just swap out the rear sight for that. And then I find it to be a lot more useful with this because I'm only taking one shot at a time because I'm in semi-auto for a lot of the games I go to. So I tend to find that magnification being a lot more useful. I think that's why you see a lot of players throw them on DMRs, on sniper rifles, obviously, because it's more useful to have that kind of pinpoint accuracy in the magnification when you're only shooting BBs one at a time versus 20 in a second. The other thing that I will say about these is I don't think they're the best for every gun out there. It depends on what type of platform you're using. And that's one of the beautiful things about Airsoft is we have so many different styles of replicas. But I think if you're gonna put a magnifier like this on there, there are some that are better than others. But before we talk about that, I did just wanna say thank you so much for watching this video and also a huge thanks to our channel members who make videos like this one possible. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to afford to be able to go out to games and test new equipment like this to get the equipment itself. And if you want to become a channel member, there's some really cool perks. Not only are you able to watch videos early, channel members get early access, but you also get a guaranteed spot in the Rose My Kit videos. You get some exclusive badges here on YouTube as well, Discord privileges. There's a lot as my way to say thank you to anybody who can help support the channel. So if you want to learn more information about channel memberships, there is a link down in the description below or depending what platform you're on, there's the join button right next to the subscribe button. But let's get right back into the conversation. I think that if you're going to put a flip to side magnifier on your gun, you want it on something with as low height over bore as possible. You want something like an M4, which I hate to say because I know a lot of people are sick of all M4s in Airsoft, but it's really the best platform because of how in line it is with the barrel and the stock. On the Stoner 63, the issue that you run into is it has more of your traditional drop stock where the stock is lower than in line with the barrel. And then having it on the feed cover for a light machine gun, you can just see how high off of the actual rifle this optic is. And the issue with that is to use this magnifier. It feels like I don't even have like a proper cheek weld. Like I would call it a chin weld in all honesty and it's just not comfortable. And again, going back to airsoft guns don't have real recoil, you know, and gas blowbacks are very minimal. The issue isn't the recoil, it's just kind of your body, like, like shaking a little bit, kind of disrupting you from the eye box. I find this much more comfortable to use on the M4 than on this, and I think you'd have similar issues if you were gonna put this on an AK or something like that. Now, the cool thing with these Pinty ones is they come in a ton of different options for whatever height optic you have. So again, I have a Pinty Hiram style optic on the front, but this uh, magnifier comes with a little riser. The riser lets me use it with this height. If I take the riser off, 
I can use it with this particular rifle. And one of the things that I really like, which you don't see from a lot of airsoft uh, optic manufacturers, is they're very open about what the height of their optics and the height of their magnifiers are. So you don't order the wrong thing, which I think is super helpful. And if you want to check out these magnifiers, I will have it linked down in the description below. But overall, I think you're going to get usage out of this depending on how you play in airsoft. If you're more of the defensive sort of type, I think these are very beneficial. I know a lot of people that have these solely because they help with IFF. You can see what team people are on from farther away. I'll, overall, I would say, while it may not be the best for everybody, I think if you want to try it out, the consequences of having this on your rifle are very minimal. It is small, it is lightweight, gets, you know, it flips to the side, out of the way when you don't need it anymore, so you can just use your standard red dot. I think that it's worth trying if you've never tried it before in Airsoft. Again, I really like these ones from Pinty, especially because they actually snap into place on the side. Like, it's not just like bouncing around on a spring like a lot of the old school ones. So I would definitely say try it, especially if you want to see something new, play in a different way in Airsoft. It could definitely be worth it, but I want to know, have you tried magnified optics like these? Do you like the flip to side combinations, or are you somebody who likes more of a low power variable optic like a dedicated scope? Personally, those are a little heavy. I think they're only good in certain circumstances, like if you're running a DMR or a sniper rifle. But again, a lot of magnification is limited by the fact that we're playing airsoft and you really kind of lose the advantage over like 3X magnification, for example, because of how far the BBs go. Like you're not gonna need six times magnification to hit somebody from 175 feet away. And if you need to be that scoped in for it, I think you've got some other issues you need to address, like getting a bar better barrel and hop up. But that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. And also a big thank you to Pinty. They were kind enough to send me out this magnifier to do some testing on. And you know, I got to say, I do really like it so far. But that's going to do it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you all next time.